I'm coming. It ain't hard to find. That's been, the, been ringing on our ears for the last two to three weeks, okay? Is that Deion Sanders is coming and that he ain't hard to find. I can tell you one thing. He definitely has not been hard to find because he has not left my social media page. As I'm sure if you're, if you're clicking on this video, he's been easy to find. And I don't think he's coming anymore. I think how he has fully arrived and positioned himself at the dinner table, possibly even at the head of the table, because my man has not stopped. I haven't slept in weeks trying to keep up with this man. I don't know when he sleeps because I haven't slept. Hey guys, welcome back to High Top Sports. I'm your host for this evening, Chuck Walker. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn the bell on. Boys, we were almost at 10,000 subs by the end of the year, so it means a lot. You can show some love and just boop, boop, hit that button and let's get it on. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you guys are laying your head down on your pillow just the other night, Deion Sanders snaps again and lands himself a four-star defensive lineman, Eric Brantley Jr. Now he's a three to four star depending on where you look and how you look at it. It varies from day to day. It kind of just depends on whatever on three or two, four, seven or how they're feeling in that morning when they, when they wake up. But right now they're being pegged as four stars because anytime you can add that extra star to the end of it, it just looks good for recruiting and marketing all, all around. As for Eric Brantley, he is the number 444th overall prospect and the number 37th defensive lineman in the 2024 cycle. Again, is it a massive splash? Not necessarily, but you got to understand something. Anytime you can constantly keep your name in the news week by week with a commit constantly flowing in, people are going to start to look and be like, what is going on there in Colorado? <laughs> I want you guys to remember something. We're going to refer to this back as we continue on in this video, but they were 68th when Dion showed up in Colorado in recruiting for 2023. They have plucked themselves or placed themselves or railroaded themselves, whatever word you want to use to describe what he's done into the top 25 in overall recruiting in 2023. Now for 2024, they're already at 17, okay? And they ain't done. <laughs> he's coming. And I know it's super early. It might be way too early. It's probably obnoxiously early, but they are number one for 2025. For the fact that Colorado, that went one and 11 last year, is sitting at top spot in 2025 recruiting, y'all better bucket that low because this shit about to get wild. And obviously 2024 is starting to get into motion again as the 2023 recruiting season is coming to a close. These coaches are already getting started and as they should, the sooner they can get the ball rolling, the sooner they can make an impact in the 2024 class, the much more likely they're going to be able to sign these guys later on in the year and build the class of their dreams he's got two massive players right now tj capers the number two edge in the country number ranked seventh nationally player in the country right now has colorado in his top five but here there's two parts to this okay because these players are going to take full advantage of this entire situation here so there are going to be players that throw that colorado logo on the top on their top five top three however you want to say it, because they know it's going to draw attention to them. If TJ Capers comes out and drops the top five and it's got your basic Miami, USC, Georgia, Louisville, et cetera, it's going to be, oh, he's going to, it's no big deal, right? Because you're used to seeing those names on big time players. But when you toss that Colorado Buffalo right in the center of your, of your uh, release of what your top five is, you're going to get some looks. Everybody's going to know who TJ Capers is now. And he's being brilliant because look, it's early for 2024. Take full advantage of it. Take the spotlight while you can. And I'm not saying that Dion's not out of it. I'm not saying this is just kind of a fluke thing. I fully believe and we should be all scared out of our minds because this guy's out of Miami, Florida. He could possibly be landing in uh, to, to Colorado. If he pulls us off the number two player in the country and he also has his eyes on the number one defensive back in the country of 2024, I told y'all you about to buck the hell up because we're going to be buck wild in this home gun, okay? Because that would be a massive haul for Dion Sanders. And as a Gator fan, well, it's going to be something. He even landed on four-star uh, athlete, Jawan Johnson, his top floor. Florida's up there as well. Again, as a Florida fan, I know a little bit more about this player. He did have a great time while he was at Florida, so I am excited about him. I'm nervous, to see, again, to see that Colorado hat. I can I can almost guarantee you, I would expect to see a Colorado logo almost on all these top players because it's going to benefit all parties involved. Dion knows it. The players know it. Nobody's really going to get their feelings hurt, but if that Colorado name can continue to grow and continue to brand itself organically, it's going to be huge, boys and girls. Now, as for Kermani McLean, again, he was supposed to sign on early signing day and went absolutely ghost radio silence nobody's heard a word from this man his mom tweeted out that he would not be signing we haven't heard anything since for the Twitter sphere and the news it's it's been it's been due to grades or what it doesn't really matter what it is okay i think it's a bigger picture than that i think we can expect to see this man signing in february and here's something interesting he's only used one official visit which was to miami back in june so he has four left i wouldn't be surprised if we saw him head on over to colorado do a visit there Bama, I'm sure, is still in it. And again, a big thing, a big factor here, Bama was, was heavy in this all the way up until the end. There was a lot of noise that Bama could be flipping Kermani McClain. 
Kermani, or Desmond Ricks ended up going to Alabama. Those two don't get along, so I don't see Kermani going to Alabama, but I bring Alabama into the equation because of this. Charles Kelly, the defensive coordinator now for Colorado and Deion Sanders, was heavily recruiting. He was a defensive, a defensive back coach at Bama. He's heavily recruiting or Kermani McClain. So it wouldn't be that crazy of a transition for him to go to Colorado because the same coach that was recruiting him to Bama is now just at Colorado with one of the greatest, DB, greatest DBs in the world. Guys, it's not that crazy to think about, okay? I did watch some uh, a few things from On3 where, again, their sources are saying that Miami does not look as promising as it once did. That would make my Christmas day much later than what it, what it would have been. But it is going to be something to, interesting to watch. Again, they are a top 25 class now. Kermani would land them easily into the top 15 class. And if to land a top 15 class when you came into 2023 in December and you were 68th when you took over, that's a big time move. That's, that's like what our boy Billy did uh, when he stepped into Florida. So it's going to be interesting to see how Dion carries himself, how he wraps up 2023. And I think we already can tell what he's doing for 2024. It's going to be an absolute blast to keep, it, keep tabs on. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn the bell on. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.